Hey, welcome to Busy Bee Sewing Projects. I'm Sherry, and today we're going to be making a bolster that's a pillow. So a bolster is a pillow that's got this kind of a strange shape to it. Anyway, mine, we're going to smock it today, and it's going to give you this really cool pattern. And it looks like it's woven, but it's not. It's just the way that the fabric is stitched that creates this really neat pattern. I came up with this idea because I found a really old pattern actually at a second-hand store that had this design on it. But you don't need to purchase the pattern to be able to figure out how to do it. Because this is probably a little outdated. What you need to do this project though is first of all you're going to need some fabric. And I picked out some nice um, kind of a red velvety fabric. And for one bolster this side you need a piece that's going to be 27 by 30. So get yourself a chunk of fabric, 27 by 30, and that will make one pillow. I probably want to do something that's a little bit heavyweight. Um, the original pattern they called for corduroy. I'm using this velvet, but you can experiment with different fabrics. So in addition to your fabric, you're going to need a stuffing to stuff it, so you want it nice and squishy. And you're going to need some big um, buttons that you can cover with this fabric. You can either purchase a button covering kit, or if you just have some scrap buttons around that you want to cover yourself. And these are nice big, I think they were one inch that I used. One and a half. One and a half. Okay. Fabric, stuffing, buttons, thread. You want some nice heavy duty thread, like a uh, upholstery thread or a button thread. Some nice strong thread. Of course, a needle. You're going to need something kind of long and pointy to go this whole distance. Um, that's kind of a mystery I haven't quite solved yet. <laughs> what to use to do that. So, well, now that I've talked about what we need. We'll get started on how to mark your fabric. What you're going to want to do is on the back of your fabric you're going to want to draw a lot of dots. I'm going to warn you that making this bolster is not a quickie easy project. This takes time. It's not fast. So if you have a lot of time and energy and you like making something really cool, this project's for you. If you want something quick and easy you can knock out in a couple hours, uh -uh, nah, this isn't it. So. Anyway, on your fabric, you're going to want to mark a bunch of dots. And to show you this, I'm actually going to mark the dots on a piece of old, it's actually uh, the back of some wrapping paper I happen to have. Normally, I would do this on my fabric, but I want to make the marks on my fabric really faint. I don't want them to be very obvious. And I know the camera won't pick that up. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you on this piece of wrapping paper. I'm going to make nice, big, bold dots so you can see it. But you're going to want to mark on your fabric. And you're going to want to mark on the back of your fabric some different things you can mark with. You can get those at the fabric store. You can get um, pens that wash out. You can use a tailor's chalk. Around home, if you just have a uh, dark fabric, if you want to use a white crayon, that works. Even sometimes pencil, or I'm actually going to use a pen, like a felt tip pen. My fabric is so thick that I can do that and it won't go through. So, anyway, mark on the back of your fabric following the instructions that I give for this. Now to mark, the best thing to use is one of these rulers that's see-through because you can do two measurements at once. Um, mine's actually broken. Somebody was playing with it, going like this, and it snapped. Um, they promised to buy me another one, but as you can see, this is very old and it's still in two pieces. I have no idea where the other half is. But to start, take your piece that's 30 by 27, and on your side that's 27 inches, we're going to put a row of dots, and they're going to be a half inch in from the edge. So I've got my ruler on half inch this way, and my first dot, something's beeping, it's my iron. Turn that off. Okay. So I'm a half inch in, and from the bottom I'm one and a half inches up. So I've gone a half inch over and one and a half up. And I want to continue putting dots all the way up that are a half inch in from the side. But now I need to go to the half inch point. So I did it one and a half, half, one and a half, half, one and a half, half, and all the way up. Now I've already marked mine with pencil, so I'm not actually going to measure them again, but you're going to have to measure it. So you see how I have a whole line of dots? I have a pattern, and there's one and a half between them. 
and they're a half inch apart. And then at the top here, if you're a little off, it's okay. And then I'm going to draw a little bit of a line joining my small dots. And that's going to help you know where to stitch later, are those lines. Okay, then you want to do that on the opposite, opposite end. You want to go one and a half inch up and an inch over. Got one there, there, there. Like I said before, I pre-measured these, so I'm just going to quick mark them so that you can see them. And actually, I cut my fabric paper really, cut my paper really crooked. So, all right, that's our starting. Now we're going to cover this whole thing with dots, and but there's going to be a pattern to the dots. So what we want to do is we want to go one inch up from the bottom, and our first dot is going to be one inch up and one, two, three, four and a half inches over. Unfortunately, I have the end of the ruler that has the teens in it, so if I look at my numbers, it's like 17, 16, so I have to count to get to four and a half, so <laughs> it's one, two, three, four and a half inches over and one inch up. Then I want another inch from there, and then from there I'm going to go two inches, one inch, two inch, one inch, two inch, one inch, and all the way down. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, and then you should have about four and a half inches. Actually, I think it's different because the pattern's changed on us. From this end, you should have about one, two, three and a half inches on this end. So you don't want to start right here. You want to start in four and a half. And then one inch, two inch, one, two, one, two, one, all the way down. <laughs> Hope I haven't lost you yet. Okay, next row, we're going to go two inches from the bottom. We were at one inch before, now we're two inches up. And we're going to go one, two, three and a half. I got to drop my ruler down a little bit because otherwise my dots are a little high. So I'm going to drop my ruler down a little bit. Okay. Two up three and a half over, and then we're going to repeat. We're going to go one inch, two inch, one inch, two inch, one inch, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And then we'll have to see how it works out down there. Okay. Now we want to go an inch above our previous line. But we want to be four and a half over. Basically, we're going to duplicate this line up here. So every line kind of shifts. So we're an inch above our previous line. My ruler's not. We'd be three inches from the bottom. And one, two, three, four and a half. So then we go one inch, two inch, one inch. Two inch, one inch, and on down the row. I'm going to stop doing all the way down because I think you get the point. An inch above this. Start at three and a half, go over one, two inch, one inch, two inch, one inch. And we go back to four and a half, one inch, two inch, one inch, two inch, one inch, etc., etc., etc. What you're going to do now is you want to join these two dots, and these two, and these two, and these two. And then if I was to continue my pattern, so you're going to end up with, um, now once again, I've already drawn my dots on here to expedite the process. I want to show you what you're going to end up with. If you go all the way up, drawing your dots. I went and made some of my lines darker so you can see them a little better. So as you can see this pattern here, and then we have this set of slash marks here. And if you look at them as sets, you're going to have a set here and a set here. And you're going to have a total of eight of these sets. They kind of look like a shoelace pattern. So you're going to end up with eight shoelace patterns all the way down. 
And these lines are going to be your um, stitching lines. You're going to basically sew these two dots together and these two. So what you got to do now is you got to finish marking all of your fabric. And I'm going to start marking my fabric and stop wasting my time marking paper because I think you get the gist. Just cover this whole thing in these dots until you have eight of these sets. And when it comes to the bottom and the top, just stop when you can't fit another one in. I think I can fit one more in up here. But, you know, just stop when you run out of space. Okay, I've got my fabric all marked and I've got a needle and thread threaded. And my thread is a little bit longer than 27 inches. It's about probably about 35. What I'm going to do is on this side where we did all the dot dash dot dash dot dash marks, I'm just going to come up. I've got a knot and then go down. And that's where I did two dots with the line in between them. Every time I have that line, I'm going to be on top. And then when you don't see a line, my thread's going to be on the bottom. So basically I'm just going to do this whole side this way. And every time I have a line on top, my thread's on top. If I don't see a line, then my thread's on the bottom. I'm going to go all the way down both sides next to the edge, should be about half inch from the edge, and I'm going to go all the way down and do that. Okay, I've done my edge stitching all the way down. i have just up, down, up, down, up, down, I think you can see it. And so then on the other side there's just big stitches in between all my little ones. And you want to do that on both sides. Just put a knot at either end so it doesn't come out. Later you're going to use this to gather up your ends, but for now we just want the stitches in there to hold it. So they're there when we get ready for that step. Next step is to start at the top of one of our sets of stitches. Remember we have these sets of stitches that look like um, shoelaces? So this right here is one set. What we're going to do is we want to sew this dot to this dot. And then we're going to go down and sew this dot to this dot. And then we go sew this one to this one, and that one to that one, on down. So I'm going to get started doing that on my fabric. So I have a needle and thread. I'm using some heavy duty um, button thread. Keeps coming out of my needle. Let me re-thread it really quick. There we go. Alright. So I always want to start with my dot in the center. So I sewed it there. Let me get up close. I'm going to take a little stitch there. Take a little stitch here and sew those two spots together. I usually do it a couple of times. I'm just going to go around and make a little knot. There. And I go down to my next, next dot in the middle. I'm going to take a stitch there. I'm going to tie a knot. And go down to my next dot, pull it up close to the dot that it's connected to. And I'm going to do a couple of stitches there. And after you do a whole set, <clears throat> then you go on to the next one. So there's a total of eight sets. And on the back, it's pulling your fabric and it's making it look woven. So I hope that makes sense. You're basically You've got eight sets of these shoelace marks, and you're going to go down and you're going to sew these two dots together, just taking a little bit of the top of the one and a little bit of the top of the other, and kind of pinching them together and sewing them together. And then you jump from here to here. You don't sew these two together. You just jump, but secure it. Sew these two together, and then these two together. And you do that for the whole thing, all eight sets of, just, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> shoelaces, <laughs> all eight sets of shoelaces.